despite the vast false equivalencies, Attorney General Merrick Garland went out and appointed a special counsel to investigate Joe Biden's handling of classified information. And that special counsel is not just any lawyer. Oh, no. His name is Robert Herr. He's a lifelong Republican. He once clerked for one of the most conservative Supreme Court justices in history, William Rehnquist. He's attended Federalist Society events and was a Trump administration appointee. That's the guy Merrick Garland picked to sick on Joe Biden. But here's the thing. As hard as Merrick Garland is trying to be nonpartisan here, as hard as he's trying to appear that he is not treating Joe Biden any differently than the DOJ is treating Donald Trump, Garland is not actually treating them the same at all. More than a year and a half passed after the National Archives first raised the issue of classified documents at Mar-a-Lago, before Merrick Garland even got around to picking a special counsel to investigate further. And yet it took Garland just 72 days to assign a special counsel to Biden after Biden's team first alerted the National Archives. And Talking Points Memo points out today that with his pick to investigate Biden, Garland is carrying on with a long tradition of Democrats in office picking Republicans to either run the FBI or do special counsel investigations. Did you know there has never been a Democrat appointed to be FBI director? Anytime a Democratic president gets the chance to pick an FBI director, they pick a Republican. Republicans do not reciprocate. You'll be shocked to hear. I mean, do you think a Republican AG working for Donald Trump would have picked a Democratic special counsel to investigate, say, Hillary Clinton or Barack Obama? And if Merrick Garland really is trying to appease the right with what he sees as a nonpartisan pick to run the Biden documents investigation, well, it isn't working. Listen to Trump ally Kash Patel explain what he thinks of the Republican who Merrick Garland picked to investigate Biden. This guy is a swamp monster of the tier one level. He's a government gangster. He's now in charge of the continued crime scene cover up. In terms of the Republicans in Congress, meanwhile, rather than rely on the swamp monster special counsel, they're just running their own investigation. Newly minted House Judiciary Chairman Jim Jordan announced today that the first order of business for his committee will be investigating Biden's handling of classified materials. Short of putting Donald Trump himself in charge of running the Biden investigation, there is no candidate that Merrick Garland could pick who would satisfy Republicans or stop them from accusing the Justice Department of unfairly running these investigations. So what then was the point of Garland picking one of their own guys? And when will Democrats stop trying to appease the right? Because you can't. Joining us now is Harry Littman, former Deputy Assistant Attorney General and former U.S. Attorney for the Western District of Pennsylvania. Harry, thanks for being here tonight. Uh, my first question to you is, was Garland's hand forced when he made the choice to put this matter first in the hands of a different Trump appointee, U.S. Attorney John Lausch, who then rec recommended to Garland that he appoint the special counsel? I wonder whether he kind of, you know, put it, boxed himself into a corner. And does it make sense to you, given a lot of people say there's no evidence right now of any underlying criminality in the Biden case? And that is really the number one point, Manny. A lot of people are saying it was forced. It's true. Once Lausch says to him, you need to do it, it's very difficult for him not to. But the letter of the law is that you appoint someone when there, a criminal investigation is warranted. And as you said, there's not a scintilla of evidence that Biden has done anything wrong, much less criminal. And if somebody has, if there's some sort of mid-level uh, staffer from his old office, you don't need a special counsel for that. So my short answer is he did it for political reasons. That doesn't make it bad. I mean, you know, it might have been that it was... Uh, all in all, savvy and forced, but it was not strictly by the book, which is how we've thought about Garland in the past. So uh, let me just ask a very straight question, Harry. Yeah. If there was no investigation into Trump and Mar-a-Lago right now, would there be an investigation into Joe Biden? You know... I don't think so. And it is a great point. On the other hand, of course, this is the hand that he and the administration have been dealt. You're certainly right that her is a hard charger and a staunch Republican. On the other hand, there is so nothing there for Biden. And I think Garland can anticipate a, a sort of subtext here that others haven't really remarked on so much. He's going to take 
the recommendations of the professionals he appoints. I think that means that Jack Smith will, in fairly short order, recommend charges in Mar-a-Lago, and that Robert Hur, in fairly short order, will recommend nothing in the Biden case. That could be wrong because there's, you know, That's... independent counsels have a way of kind of go becoming their own sort of story, branching yes. out to others, et cetera. He's going to take a long time, I think, to get a staff together. This could hover over the White House for a while. Nevertheless, I think Garland anticipates he'll be in a position down the line to say, look, I did what her uh, recommended. Look, I did what Smith recommended. And uh, that will um, equate to Trump charges, no Biden charges. It's interesting that you mentioned, first of all, fascinating what you're saying there about the likelihood. So just to be clear, yeah. you believe that appointing her to investigate Biden increases, not decreases, the chances of Jack Smith recommending criminal charges against Donald Trump? I'd say I'd say it doesn't uh, have any effect. One hopes it doesn't have any effect, but um, Smith is already well down the line, and there's a lot of reason to think, just kind of reading the tea leaves, that he's, he's pointed in the direction of charges. I think the notion is that they're both hermetically sealed, sort of separate fiefdoms, if you will, and that, but that's a, that's a question that is provoking a lot of attention now. Does it make it more likely, less likely? I think it makes it neither one nor the other, but that's quick. the way things were going independently. Harry, quick last question to you. Yeah. Just to be clear on the law here, all I heard about last August after Mar-a-Lago, especially from Trump defenders, was it's all about intent. You have to prove intent. And Trump basically came out and confessed intent. He said, they're my documents. I took them, give them back to me. There is no evidence of intent on Joe Biden's part. There's not only no evidence of intent, there's no evidence of knowledge. I find it inconceivable he's going to be subject to criminal yeah. charges. And for that reason, I think you, you have to say that the decision by Garland was driven by more than the letter of the law. Yes, indeed. Harry Littman, former Deputy Assistant Attorney General, former U.S. Attorney for the Western District of Pennsylvania. Always a pleasure. Thanks, Maddie.